Hello, and welcome to YWCA York's Tech Safety Webinar. My name is Joni Wolf, and I work at YWCA York within its Victim Services programs. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and during this YWCA Week Without Violence initiative, we will be discussing ways in which our victims and survivors experience tech-facilitated abuse, how we are able to support them, and available resources survivors can utilize to help keep themselves and their families safe. Again, my name is Joni Wolf, and I am the Professional Development and Training Specialist at YWCA York in the Community Education Department. I have a bachelor's degree with concentrations in health and education from Westchester University. I have 19 years experience working with adults and children in various capacities, such as working with at-risk youth, youth with autism, to the juvenile justice system, to now working with victims of trauma. I have been at the YWCA for seven years, and like most nonprofit life, I am aware of many hats. As the professional development and training specialist, I coordinate our initial advocacy training for all new staff, provide opportunities for professional development for current staff, coordinate and facilitate our partnership with York College of Pennsylvania's Victim Advocacy course, supervise victim services interns, as well as providing educational programs, outreach, and awareness events throughout York County to increase awareness and understanding about gender-based violence. I also provide hospital accompaniments for victims identifying at all York County hospitals. I have confidentiality privilege, however, I am a mandated reporter of suspected child abuse. I am also a Pennsylvania State Certified Trainer of the required training for any mandated reporters. YWCA York is a mainstay nonprofit organization in York, Pennsylvania, with the unrivaled mission of eliminating racism, empowering women, and promoting peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. Chartered in 1891, YWCA York has a long and rich history of creating opportunities for women's growth, leadership, and power. We are now a gender inclusive organization and YWCA York reaches 22,000 people each year through the programs and services offered through York County. Worldwide, the YWCA impacts more than 25 million people in over 120 countries. Please take note that today's topic is sensitive in nature and may be triggering for some folks. Please make sure you are taking care of yourself and feel free to step away if you need to. Remember to take time for yourself because you deserve it. You really do. Some of our objectives for today are to gain a greater understanding of how to assess for misuse of technology, to gain a greater knowledge of basic tech safety tips and how to stay safe online, and to gain a greater awareness of tech safety apps and resources that are available. Before we begin to talk about the trauma from tech facilitated abuse, let's check in to get on the same page about what trauma is. According to the American Psychological Association, trauma is an emotional response to a terrible event like an accident, rape, or natural disaster. All people react to trauma differently, both in long and short term, and what might be a trauma to one person may not be to another. Some of the feelings people describe when experiencing a trauma are guilt, shame, fear, anxiety, sadness, and even numbness. Survivors may have trouble sleeping, have nightmares, difficulty concentrating, and feelings of hypervigilance. This means that they are very alert and hyper aware about what is going around them, and sometimes are perceived as jumpy. It is important to note there is no right or wrong way to react to a trauma. When we say tech facilitated abuse, what are we talking about? This is a form of abuse using controlling behavior that involves technology as a means to coerce, stalk, or harass another. Some examples of tech abuse are sending abusive text messages, emails, or messages via social media maybe sending someone unwanted communication about sex or hateful comments based on sex, gender identity, 
or sexual orientation, M making continuous controlling or threatening phone calls, making someone prove where they are by sending photos of their location, spying on, monitoring, or stalking someone through any type of surveillance, such as a tracking system or spyware, maybe sharing intimate photos of someone without their consent, sometimes called revenge porn. So what are some other types of texts that are actually being used? Some of the most common types are phones, social medias, and messaging. Other common types include computers, pictures or videos, or shared accounts. Some less common ways are hidden cameras, gaming consoles, data brokers, or online information and apps. Many of us may have experienced feelings when we've received a hurtful comment online. Although these experiences are unfortunately all too common in the online world, that doesn't mean they are any less harmful. Coping and healing require acknowledging the impact of online abuse without dismissiveness, judgment, or shame. According to Safe Steps, a family violence response center in Australia, the impacts of tech facilitated, facilitated abuse include being constantly harassed or monitored can, like any form of abuse, leave you feeling powerless and justifiably fearful for your safety. Someone who uses technology to abuse you is probably also making it harder for you to leave the relationship by limiting your ability to talk privately with friends or contact support services that could help you. This person may also use technology to harass, abuse, monitor, or track your location after you leave the relationship. The time after leaving a family violence situation can be very dangerous, but there are things you can do to plan for your safety. The National Network to End Domestic Violence has a specific part of their organization called the Safety Net Project. Their goal is to explore technology in the context of intimate partner violence, sexual assault, and violence against women. They surveyed over 1,000 centers between December of 2020 and January of 2021 to see the effects COVID-19 had on experiences of survivors dealing specifically with tech abuse. According to the report, advocates around the country reported that tech abuse increased during the COVID-19 pandemic. As advocates and other victim services providers around the country had shifted to new ways of using technology to communicate with survivors and each other, all while coping with profound personal, professional, and pre existing societal challenges and inequities. The implications of the responses offer us glimpses of the future of a post COVID world, including both troubling trends in the misuse of technology to harm and control survivors and also promising new avenues to increase access for survivors to services and ultimately safety, justice, and healing. According to the report, the most common types of tech abuse that were talked about were harassment, limiting access to technology, and surveillance, all increased during the pandemic. Respondents reported an increase in every type of tech abuse. Phones, social media, and messaging were the technologies most commonly misused as a tactic of tech abuse. The Internet of Things devices, next generation location trackers, and other emerging technologies are increasingly used in tech abuse. Survivors' lack of access to technology, sometimes called the digital divide, is a barrier to accessing services, legal support, courts, and other services and social supports. Though victim services providers increasingly offered services via video, text, and chat during the pandemic, most found that traditional phone services or meeting in person with health precautions remained essential strategies. To understand what we need to do, we need to understand how and why abusers may be doing this. Perpetrators of abuse can take stalking their victim as a personal challenge. Their actions are meant to provoke or scare their victim, and any sort of response is positive reinforcement to their behavior. This creates a skewed perception of reality. Part of the danger of technology is the evolution of the internet and social networking sites makes it easier for stalkers to gain information about their victims. Another difficult factor of cyberstalking is anonymity. 
Stalkers don't ever need to physically interact with their victims to terrorize them because they can do everything online. So now we can kind of understand the impacts of this behavior that has on survivors, something that we had discussed earlier. Let's review. That being constantly harassed or monitored can feel you leaving powerless and justifiably fearful for your safety. They are probably also making it harder for you to leave the relationship by limiting your ability to talk privately with friends or contact support services that could help you. This person may also use technology to harass, abuse, monitor, or track your location after you leave the relationship. The time after leaving a family violence situation can be very dangerous, so this is why you must contact support services for safety planning. Now, we all know abusers might send texts, emails, or Facebook messages threatening violence, or perpetrators or offenders might misuse access to databases to identify, gain information, or plan an attack. So what do we do? First, we must be trauma-informed, and that means taking into consideration a person's experiences of trauma and their reactions to it. Let them know they aren't alone and you believe them. Saying simple phrases such as, I believe you, I am so sorry this has happened to you, can go a long way and start building trust and rapport. Also empower survivors to plan for their safety. You can support them in many ways that we will now discuss. The first is documentation. You can utilize cloud services. You can make hundreds of different email addresses through Google, Yahoo, and others. Make sure you take screenshots and connect that gallery to a secure cloud account to save where they cannot access them. Or use safety apps that provide a secure location to save pictures or documentation. If the survivor would like, contact law enforcement to get police involved. This is completely up to the survivor. Some survivors do not want police involvement due to fear of what that person might do. It might be hard, but encourage to not use social media and empower them to report to sites for any cyber stalking violations. Next, you can empower them by helping them turn off their location settings and think about their location. The turn off location settings, most apps need this turned on. However, you can manually go in and turn this off whenever not in use. Someone would be able to ping your exact location. This is why it's very important to turn these off. Try to use a safer computer. While nothing is 100% safe, you should never get, and you should never guarantee that to a survivor, but they might be able to access a safer computer at a library or campus computer. Turn off your contact syncing. This is when apps sync contacts in your phone automatically. Think about data brokers. Don't sign up for anything with a phone or an email. When you sign up for those coupons at a store for that 20% off, that company then sells this data and we are never sure who has it and how it is being used publicly. A lot of domestic violence websites have a quick escape button. This button is so the survivor is able to research his source resources safely at home. When they know their abuser is coming into the room, they can hit the quick escape button and it will clear your browsing history that you were just doing. I've also seen this button change to different websites. For example, the one I know goes to a cat dog video website. There are other resources that advocates have to allow them to have a confidential address. Connect them to local services. There are advocates that are specially trained to handle situations they may be going through. You don't have to do it on your own. You cannot solve the situation for them. In trying to do what you think may be right, you may put them in further danger. Advocates can help survivors safety plan for their specific situation. They also have resources available to them that the general public does not or may not be aware of. As much as we want to keep people offline for their safety during this time, the world that we live in today may not allow that. When they may venture into the online world, here are some things to keep in mind and look for when finding a safe space online. Have clear standards within the community and enforce them. Actions have consequences. 
Have a welcoming and non-judgmental zone is a safe zone. Not requiring everyone to turn their cameras on, maybe allowing people to type rather than speak. Remember that a safe space should actually be safe and respect privacy. This can change when more members join, so stay open to change and be ready to adapt. Now we will look at some sites or apps that can provide safety and support. The first app we are going to look at is the RAIN app, and this is Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network's safety app. The RAIN app gives survivors of sexual violence and their loved ones access to support, self-care tools, and information to help manage the short and long-term effects of sexual violence. You can find support in the app's hotline feature and can connect you directly to one-on-one -on -one support from a trained support specialist on RAIN's National Sexual Assault Hotline via phone or online chat. It's free, confidential, and available 24-7. You can also chat other survivors in our peer-to-peer -peer help room. The, this app's self-care section contains exercises to help you take a moment for yourself as you heal. They include a mood tracker to help you reflect on how you're feeling and figure out the best ways to care for yourself. They provide relaxing visuals from the Monday campaign to help you distress and audio exercises from Headspace for calming meditation. The app's learn section includes helpful information on sexual violence topics, finding and giving support and healing. You can also hear from survivors offering their own real life stories of hope and healing. The next two apps I'd like to discuss are both part of the NNEDV. The first one is SafetyNet's Tech Safety app and is an educational resource. It was created for anyone who thinks they may be experiencing harassment or abuse through technology and wants to learn how they can increase their privacy and security while using technology. It contains information that can help users identify tech facilitated harassment, stalking and abuse and includes tips on what can be done. In March of 2022, the NNEDV released an updated version of this app for newer forms of technology forms of tech abuse, and strategies for increasing public privacy and safety. The most common kinds of abuse covered in the app include harassment, location tracking, and surveillance via phones, tablets, computers, and gaming devices. The tech safety app also has safety and privacy tips for social media and other apps. The second one I want to talk about is SafetyNet's DocuSafe app. And this is a free app that helps co survivors collect, store, and share evidence of abuse, such as domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, online harassment, and dating violence. Survivors can document abuse by logging individual incidents, including any photos, screenshots, or video documentation of threatening messages, harassing social media posts, unwanted repeated calls, or online personation, among other types of abusive behaviors. I talked about how you need to connect survivors to local services, and I want to talk about YWCA York. YWCA York is York County's provider of free and confidential, comprehensive services to those impacted by violence in our community. With expertise in working with victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and human trafficking. Here is a quick video that helps describe what we do at YWCA York's Victim Services Programs. Within YWCA York's larger mission of eliminating racism and empowering women, we have these great Victim Services Programs. We provide services to victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, human trafficking, homicide survivors, and other violent crime. We have an emergency shelter so that people who have that immediate need for a safe roof over their heads while they are escaping violence, we can provide that. 
We have a legal advocacy program where we have advocates who will accompany to uh, PFA court, to law enforcement interviews. We also have an attorney and a paralegal that handle civil legal matters for survivors. We have a counseling program where we have master's level counselors who specialize in working with folks who have experienced trauma. We also have medical advocacy, so we'll meet folks at the hospital or for medical appointments. We have case management services, safety planning. We have child advocates who will work with children age appropriately on what their needs are. And then we have our community education department and they are really charged with taking our mission and the work that we do with individuals and with families and expanding that to the community. So what are the community's needs in relation to these types of victimization? We can connect people with us and with a variety of, of organizations throughout the community to make sure that people in our community are safe, have the resources that they need to be safe. We're not going to pressure you to make decisions that you're not ready to make or that don't feel like the right thing for you. We recognize that this is your life. These are your decisions. This is your family. Our job is to let you know what your options are. We're gonna support you. We're gonna be there with you every step of the way. If that looks like going to court, you're gonna have an advocate with you if that's what you want. If it looks like coming into counseling, you're gonna have a master's level clinician to help you sort through whatever it is that you need to sort through. It's our job to give you options. It's our job then to support you in all of that, whatever that looks like. There is no cost to anyone seeking our services. Our services are grant funded, so at no time are we going to ask for your insurance. We're not gonna ask for co-pays. We're not gonna ask for fees for service, ever. This is life-changing work. These are life-changing and life-saving services. If you or someone you know may need support, we have a 24-7 confidential hotline available to anyone who's in need. This is just a quick rundown of services that we can provide. If you have any questions about what was presented in today's presentation, here are the main resources used to gather this information. Thank you for attending YWCA York's Tech Safety Webinar, Staying Safe in a Virtual World. If you have any questions or comments about this presentation, please feel free to reach out. I can be reached by email at jwolf at ywcayork.org. If you feel yourself having a hard time after this presentation, please make sure to reach out for support. Contact a friend or family member you trust or reach out to your local support services. Make sure you are taking time for yourself when dealing with heavy feelings. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.